Banded sugar ants, or Campanotus concebrinus, are a beautiful species of Australian ant. So how do you keep them? How do you look after them and raise a successful colony? Well in today's video we will find out how to do this. So let's get into the video. Before we start the video, just quickly, if you would like to support the channel, head over to Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Novo Ants, and you can uh, choose from the different levels and the different perks that come along with those different levels as well. So thank you very much. Now this video is going to be broken down into several steps. First of all, species overview, all about the species of banded sugar ants. Number two, founding a queen, how to set them up successfully. Number three, growing colony, what to do as the colony grows. Number four, inside the colony, what happens inside and what is it made up of. And lastly, feeding, how to feed and look after your colony of banded sugar ants or Campanotus concebrinus. So let's get into the different steps and begin this tutorial. Campanotus concebrinus. The common name is banded sugar ants, and they get the name banded sugar ants from the band of colour at the top of their abdomen. It's a lighter brownish colour on their abdomen. They are a very common species here in Australia and are distributed among a lot of the country. Here we can see their distribution worldwide, and you'll notice that they are native to Australia only. Closer up on Australia, we can see the states involved here, so the southern parts of WA and South Australia, but not found in Northern Territory or the top part of WA, Western Australia. But that doesn't mean they're not there in some way, they just haven't been recorded yet. The species is known to come out around dusk to forage, forage for their food sources. So they'll be out looking for anything, any of the sources of protein or sugars that they can find. You'll find them exploring up in the trees, along the ground. And also something you'll notice with these is the different castes. So it's a polymorphic species, which means you have lower caste workers, which you see here, and then you do have the big soldiers. But we'll get into that a little bit later. This species is also known for their tandem running, which means two workers will run closely behind each other in search when they're foraging. The species comes in different sizes, right from the small worker, which is around about 10 to 12 millimetres, right up to the big workers, which get up to the 15, 16 millimetres. And the queens themselves are quite large, getting to 20 to 25 millimetres long. So there's a bit of an overview of the species, the banded sugar ants or Campanotus concebrinus. So for you avid ant keepers out there, how do you look after a colony? How do you get it started? Well, let's get into the next steps. To start a colony, you're going to need a queen. Now, whether you buy a queen or you catch a queen, it's essential to raising a successful colony. So setting up a queen, founding that queen, so here in the video, we can see a queen with her wings still, and inside this test tube is a male drone. So that's what they look like if you're wondering. So during their nuptial flights, these males and queen elates will leave the nest and start new colonies. So the males here will mate with the queen, and then they will die, and the queen will go on to start a founding nest. Here we can see a queen that has started a founding nest and laid some eggs so her wings have dropped and she's ready to start her colony. So setting up a queen in the right conditions is essential to make sure that she's comfortable and happy to start laying her eggs as we can see here and she's laid quite a few eggs this particular queen. So there's a particular setup that you will need to follow. Now with the banded sugar ants you can see they've got that light band on the top of their abdomen there and that identifies them as a Campanotus concebrinus queen. There are very similar queens 
and they are the nigriceps, but their abdomen is completely black. Okay, so let's get into setting up a queen. So I've made a video on this, what to do when you've caught a queen. You can check that video out if you like. But basically it's the test tube set up like you see here. So at the left side you can see the water reservoir and that is just plugged up with some cotton wool and that is so the water soaks into that cotton wool. The queen can drink from there but it also keeps the chamber nice and moist. Then the queen has plenty of room to move around in that chamber. You don't want too much room for your queen as well because they like to feel nice and safe. She'll begin to lay eggs in there and then on the other end of the test tube you just need to plug it up with some cotton wool so she doesn't escape. When she's in that little claustral chamber she feels nice and safe and you'll need to keep that somewhere dark and cool. Now she won't require any food while she's in that founding stage. You only need to start feeding her once workers arrive and that can be some time. As the colony starts to develop there's new things that you'll need to do and how to look after your colony. So let's get into step three, which is a growing colony. As a colony begins to grow, you may need to expand the nesting room for them. Now a colony will last in the test tube for quite some time. As the first workers do emerge, you can remove the cotton from the end of the test tube and that will allow them to leave the test tube and go foraging. And it's at this stage where you'll need to attach an outworld. You can either place your test tube inside an outworld, as you can see here, or you can actually attach it to the side of an outworld as well. So a test tube will keep them going for quite some time. You can see a colony here that I've kept and we've got probably a dozen to 15 workers in this colony. And they're doing really well no problem at all. So it's quite a cheap way to keep a colony of banded sugar ants. I've just got a plastic container here, the test tube in, a bit of sand in the bottom of it and a couple of feeders and again you can just use some alfoil or baking paper to feed your colony. Now as they grow you will eventually need to give them more room. Now you can do this in a couple of ways. You can just add more test tubes to the outworld and let them expand that way or you can get a nest like an acrylic nest or a whitehong nest or plaster nest, any of them in fact will do. They uh, do not need substrate to actually spin cocoons or for their brood at all. So it's a great way to keep your banded sugar ants. Now currently here you can see the workers frantically moving the cocoons from outside in the outworld back inside the test tube. Now they may have moved the cocoons outside just to regulate the temperature a little bit. Um, not, nothing to be worried about and as the light's exposed to them they're quickly moving them all back in which is pretty cool to watch anyway. And this is some of the fantastic things that you can see as you keep your colony and as it expands. Now a colony can take a little bit of time to expand. But once the colony gets going and the brood are developing and the workers have come along, it is exponential and the colony will just grow and grow from year to year. Now my largest colony, um, which I haven't overly fed or anything like that, is coming up on a, um, three years old now and we're probably looking at about three or four hundred workers with that one and many different casts there as well. With a colony this size, there are no majors at the moment. So we've just got those workers frantically running around in the outworld. Um, it's at certain stages that you will get the brood developing into those workers, those soldiers. And the soldiers, they have those big heads so they can cut up different forms of protein, but they're also there for defense as well. So inside a test tube set up like this, it's quite nice to view them. And you can see the brood here. You can see the workers just tending to that brood and delicately cleaning it. And you can see your queen here as well, nicely. See those nice wing scars on her thorax as well. Now the lighter coloured ones here that you can see, they're just newly hatched workers, newly formed ones, and they will darken up as they age. So that's colony growth. As the colony grows, you'll just need to expand it with more nesting space. And again, that can be in any form that you please. Whatever your preference is, 
in nests. Okay, let's have a look inside the colony now. See what happens inside it and what you can expect. You may find yourself losing time just watching your colony inside the nest and that's why I like keeping them in this way. You can see the inner workings of a colony, how they interact with each other inside the nest, what they're actually doing in there as well, how they tend to their brood and as they busily walk around and feed each other and you get to see the different types, the polymorphic species especially like this where you can see the different size of workers. You get access to the queen as well. You can see the queen and what she's up to and you might even capture her laying an egg. Inside the nest you will be able to see the different stages of the brood, the small eggs that we can see here as they develop into the pupae and you can see the workers regurgitating that food and feeding them at the same time gently cleaning the brood to make sure they're clean and there's no bacteria growing on them and as they develop from the brood into the cocoons as well so the different stages are available to see and you might even be able to see a brand new ant hatching from one of the cocoons as mentioned earlier the species is polymorphic which means there are different sizes in the working casts the smaller ones as we can see here generally tend to the brood and have the cleaning duties these are the smaller workers after the smaller workers we have a medium sized worker which we can see here and you can see the abdomen is swollen as well and then after the medium sized ones we go into the big worker casts as well which are defending the colony you'll notice that some of the larger ants will actually act as repletes they will gorge themselves and they will fill, be filled up and they will act as a portable refrigerator to supply food to the colony. In the middle here you can see one with that bloated abdomen, ready to dispense food whenever a worker requests it by tapping it with its antennae and requesting a nice meal. Now this species and most species in fact enjoy a nice cramped nest. Now this is a custom Waitong nest that I've made for my colony and I will need to expand it relatively soon. We can see the queen here in this colony. So this is Queen Scarlet if you haven't seen some of the other videos. So you can see here she's just very close to her brood, tending to those. And we can see that the colony likes to put their brood next to the water sponges to keep the hydration up. So again, let's have a look at the different sizes here. So we've got the small worker here next to a medium worker, which we can see is acting as a replete. And then we have a look at the big soldiers. Now their size is quite big. When you look at that head size, difference for a normal worker. And normally the soldiers will also act as repletes for the colony. Look at those beautiful big soldiers. And that's what's amazing about being able to see inside this colony. And one of the things that I really love about keeping banded sugar ants. So what else is essential in keeping a colony of banded sugar ants? Well you're going to need to feed them. So what do you feed them? How do you go about doing that? Well let's get into number five. Okay let's look at the final stage which is feeding and looking after your colony. What to give them, when to give it to them and how much will they need as they start to grow. Okay, so one of the first things that your colony of ants will need is a form of sugars or carbohydrates. Now I feed mine a solution which is 50% sugar, 50% water, and they love it. And all you need to do is put a little piece of baking paper or aluminium foil like so on the ground and then put a few drops of the liquid, the sugar liquid, sugar water there. Now you can do the same with honey as well. Honey, very sticky though, so just be a little bit careful there, but they will readily take the honey as well. So they definitely need some form of carbohydrate. Now, if you have an established colony, you can use one of these, which is a liquid feeder. Now they're great as well, because you can put a fair bit of the honey or sugar water in there, and it'll last the colony, so you're not constantly having to uh, put in a piece of baking paper with the sugar solution on there as well for them all the time. So. It can just make it a little less labor intensive when you're looking after your colony. A critical part of any colony is making sure they have a good supply of water. 
So again, you can use a liquid feeder like shown here to supply that water. And this is a good option because it keeps that water up to them and you don't need to fill that up very often at all. Um, other options that you can use is a test tube full of water just blocked up with some cotton and you can just put that in their outworld as well. And you can use other things like dishes to supply um, a bit of water as well. So just like a bottle cap or any small sort of dish like that as well. The problem with those is though that you're going to continually need to fill it up with water. But water is super critical. If you're going to remember to do anything with your ants, keep that water up to them. Now essential is protein, protein source for your colony. Now in the current video, I've actually put a cricket in there and the cricket unfortunately I didn't finish off quite well enough. Um, so it's caused a bit of chaos here in the outworld. Um, they're running around wondering what to do with that source of protein. So protein is essential, essential for the growth of the brood in the colony. The workers don't necessarily need it themselves, but the queen will need some protein and that brood will so it can develop as well. So what I feed mine, I feed mine crickets as you can see here. So generally I will put a crushed cricket or I will chop the head off the cricket and throw it in for them. Um, the other option you can give them is mealworms as well, but just remember to cut those mealworms in half so they can access the soft gooey insides to those mealworms as well. Other sources of protein that you can give to your colony is ant powder. Now that is a protein powder for your ants. And there's different distributors that have that. So there's a link down below to Ant Keeping Depot where you can find it as well. So you need to mix up a bit of a solution and you can put that down as like a liquid, again on some baking paper and they can drink that to get a source of protein. You can also use other things like other meats as well. So uh, turkey or chicken, things like that. But experiment a little bit with the protein. I found uh, giving mine uh, cold meats like chicken or turkey, they do love it, but it stinks and it, it ruins the uh, outworld. So I try and avoid that now and just feed them crickets or mealworms. So that's the essentials in feeding your colony. Number one, carbohydrates in the form of sugar water or honey. Number two, water, essential for any colony. Make sure you keep that water up to them. And number three, a protein source. Crickets or mealworms are a fantastic choice. So that is feeding and looking after your colony. It's at this point I'd like to thank my Patreon here, Happy Ant UK. Thank you very much for your support at your tier level. And thanks to our new Patreon that's joined us as well. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial on keeping banded sugar ants. Please let me know below in the comments what you think of this species. Do you like this species? Is it a species that you'd like to keep yourself? If you have kept it, what do you like about the species in particular, their different characteristics? Are there any tips you'd give as well to people who want to keep this species? Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you haven't already, please subscribe and like the video and share it with your friends as well. And plenty more videos to come, so remember, Happy ant keeping.